Okay, so now I'm going to show you the main areas in logic and the first one to be aware of is this one here. You see there's a blue outline around it and that is the arrangement window or the main window. And this is basically where all the magic is going to happen. When we add a new track, so we've got the piano here, if we add a new one, say another software instrument, it's going to add it below it. So on the vertical, we've got all of our different channels. So this would be piano, this might be drums, the next one might be bass. And this section over here is the timeline. And we're going to fill this in with different regions. So create a MIDI region. So we'll have loads of these all kind of built up and that will build up our song. And as we hit play, it's going to scroll from left to right and it's going to play whatever we've got in these kind of regions in these different tracks. So yeah, this will all be fill up with different instruments and this will be fill up with different boxes containing either MIDI or audio and we will hear that when we hit play. So that's the arrangement window. We'll go into more depth in a minute, but over here is one of the other key areas and that's the library. So this is where you're gonna choose all your sounds from. So when I created that new track just now, I got a piano, but if I wanna see what else I've got, here are all the different pianos. But if I scroll this gray bar over, you can see here's all the different instruments in the library. So you can see bass, drums, electric drum kit, guitar, keyboards, and you can search for these sounds as well. So guitar, and all the guitars come up. You may notice this little icon here. That's because I haven't downloaded all the full content because Logic's library is quite big now and I've got quite a lot of other third party libraries. But if you've got the space for it, I recommend downloading it all. So yeah, if we wanna go back, we just scroll that bar over to the left and say I wanted a keyboard, a different keyboard, a synth, let's say, and then I've got a different synth. So you'll see that updated in here. So that is the library and this is where all your sounds are, all your virtual instruments are in here. So anytime you add a MIDI track or a pattern, then you can choose from this library of different sounds. One thing I should say as well, if you come up here, you'll notice this question mark. And if it's not turned on, it's a good idea to turn it on because that is your quick help. And this will update this little box here. It will give you instructions whenever you hover over something. You see it's moving. So this is a good idea to turn it on when you're new. So you can just hover over something if you don't understand what it does. So that's really helpful. So the next main area to know about is the inspector. And the inspector is this here, also called the channel strip because it reflects a channel strip of a mixing console. You've got your faders, which control the volume, and you've got pan, which controls right and left. And you just click and you can move those in the direction you want. What I'm gonna do is just clear this channel strip for you so I can explain it better. So um, reset channel strip. So that's what it looks like completely blank. And you can see there's all these little different boxes these little different modules, if you like. We're not gonna go through every single one right now, but just know the important ones here are the instrument. This is what's gonna load the sound. And a lot of these sounds from the library over here are versions of these. So for instance, Alchemy is one of Logic's really good synthesizers. So if I go to Alchemy here, it loads up and that's loaded up the instrument. And if you've got a MIDI keyboard selected, it will play when you hit that MIDI keyboard. After this, you've got audio effects, and that's where you can add things like reverbs or EQs or delays, things to affect the sound. So if you wanted a, let's say a delay, say like an echo, you'll see that now that it's got an echo attached to it. So that's what the audio effects do. And then there's also the pan here for right and left, for sending it to the left or right speakers and the volume, which is very important. So you can control the volume with this slider. And you'll notice that there are two of these. So you'll always see two next to each other. So this first one is always this one that you've got highlighted. So say you see this one's a lighter gray than the darker gray here. So if I was to then go up and I can do that with the cursor arrows up or down, or I can click on it, you'll see that it changes, right? So classical electric piano, E piano, that's the instrument, and it's got these two other effects on, if you like, it's it's sending the signal somewhere else, but we don't need to worry about that right now. But if I then go to this Big Dipper one, you'll see that it's got alchemy and it doesn't have any effects or sends on it. So um, if I move this, which is also a volume, you'll see it's reflected there in the volume. And the same goes for this one. If I click on that and then move that, that one's been changed and also the pan also is changing there. So this is just a reflection of this. So, but what is this second one? Logic will always show you the stereo outs or one of the buses. So a bus is basically another channel, an auxiliary channel that you send your 
signal to. So for instance, you might want to just have reverb on a different channel and then you've got that separate. By default, as I said, it's the stereo output, which is basically all of your individual channels, your channel one, your channel two, three, four, five, six, whatever you've got in there, they are all gonna eventually flow into this stereo out, which is basically a master channel, if you like. So you could, if you turn this all the way down, everything's gonna be off. If you're gonna put an effect over it, it's gonna affect everything in the whole project, basically. So that's your stereo out or your master channel. Okay, so those are the three main areas that you see usually straight away. And these are also reflected up here in this light silver color. So if you come to here, you've got the library, which you can open and close with Y. That's where all the sounds are stored. Then you've got the next one, which is the inspector, which is where the channel strip is to see that information. And then you've got the question mark we talked about, if you wanna turn that on and off to see what things are doing. And then you've got one more, which is the toolbar. And that shows a few extra controls. I don't tend to keep this on. I tend to have this turned off because it frees up a bit of space overall for me. And a lot of these you won't use that often. So I think it's better just to have them hidden, but that's up to you. Moving on, we've got the smart controls. So some of Logic's instruments, they have key smart controls. So things that are really gonna change the sound. If you wanna just get access to some of those big key changes. So here we've got volume, we've got an EQ, the treble and the bass, we've got drive or distortion. Um, so if you just want to change these quickly, then you use the smart controls here. And the shortcut for that is B. I don't use them that often either, but it's there if you want it. Uh, and next one, which is very important is the mixer window. So this will show you all of your channels at the same time. So you can kind of use it like a real life mixing console and you can spread your channels out like this and you can see them all at once so you can get a better balance. So that's what you might use the mixer window for. And this gets used quite a lot, especially when you're a bit more experienced and you're mixing your music. Uh, the shortcut for that is X by the way. Uh, the next one along is the editors. So when we're working with MIDI or when we're working with audio or when we're working with the drummers, there's certain editor windows and that allows us to go deeper into the programming basically. So, but we'll touch on that a bit more later. So once you're in the editor windows, you've got the piano roll, which is for looking at the MIDI notes and you can draw them in here or you can record them with the MIDI keyboard. It will also show you a score, like an actual musical notation of what you've played, which is really handy if you're doing more classical or you're more of a traditional musician, that's very handy. You've got the step sequencer, uh, which is where you can put in, you can click in notes basically and turn them off by clicking again. And what that allows you to do is very quickly just write some basic stuff in. It's really good for writing beats or loops if you're kind of doing hip hop, that kind of thing. Uh, the shortcut for the editor, by the way, is E. Uh, so if we go back on this one, we did the score, we did the step sequencer, and then you've got session player. And to use the session player, which is the Logic Pro's AI, then you need to create a region at Playhead or load it via a new track and go create session player. You could also do it there and it will create a new session player. So that's generated some AI music for you. Those are the four types of editors available to you in Logic. We'll get into that a bit later on once we've recorded in something. I'm just gonna delete that. So those are all of these ones so far. Next, you've got your transport controls. These should look familiar to you, I imagine. Rewind, fast forward, stop, play, record, free tempo recording and cycle. And there's some shortcuts for these that are definitely worth knowing. So space is play and that will play from wherever this playhead is. Sometimes you wanna go right back to the start of your song and the quick way to do that is with enter or return. If you want to record something, you will need to hit R. Before you record something, you have to arm a channel to record it. So otherwise everything would record all at once, but we wanna select what we're gonna record. So I wanna say record the piano. I've armed it with that red R flashing, you now hit R on your keyboard, or you can come up there and then once you place some stuff in, it's gonna record it in. And that's when you start looking at the piano roll and some of the MIDI editors that you can open with E. So we've done play, we've done stop. So stop, space, enter, send it back to the beginning. And you can drag this to any point if you wanna rewind or fast forward, that's probably the easiest way to get about. You can just click as well up here. You have to make sure you've got this icon showing, not that, cause that won't do anything. But if you wanna come to bar 14 here, there you go, bar 15, you just click when you've got this icon showing. So nice and easy. Up here, you've got the display. 
So this shows you things like the bar, the beats, uh, the tempo. So you might want a faster song, which would be say, you can double click into it and you can type in a number or you can click into it and drag up and down. And there you go, it normally defaults to 120. And here you've got key signature. So you've got, here you've got time signature. Most people probably keep this in 4-4, but you've got a load of different options if you want. And you've got the key signature here. You don't have to put this data in, but if you do, it then makes it really easy for transposing between different keys. What I quite like to do often is click this down arrow and go to custom because then you get a bigger display and you get things like, uh, rather than just the bars, you get the time as well. You get time in seconds here, which is quite nice to see. And that's the main advantage really. So let me just undo that a second, come to beats and projects. So here you can replace something. This isn't one I use. Here's one for solo, which you will use. It's also similar to this button here. We'll come to these in a second. So up here, you've got kind of metronome settings. So one, two, three, four here. When that one's selected, you'll get a countdown before you record. If it's not selected, you won't get a countdown. And this one, once that's selected, that's your metronome. So that will actually start clicking left, right, left, right, um, to give you time, basically. So you hear that? Or about it. Um, here you've got your master volume. I recommend not touching this at all. Then you've got these four, which I think I need to move my head out the way in the top right corner. Okay, so you've got these four up here. And this one shows the events and this kind of just shows you all the notes that you've got in your in your project. Um, this isn't one you'll use too often. So let's move on from that one for now. This one here is where you can add some notes. So if you want to write something like chorus is too loud, then you can just type that in by clicking in there, hit done. And you can do it for a project, overall project, or you can do it on a track by track basis. The next one along is one you probably will use, and this is Apple Loops. So Apple comes with a load of ready-made audio or MIDI. The thing to be careful of here is that these green ones are MIDI and the blue ones are audio. So what that means is these ones, if you drag them in, you can just click, drag and drop it. And it's gonna load up these notes, which are MIDI notes, MIDI information. Um, and it's gonna load up a different instrument here. So we've got guitar for these ones, but the good thing about MIDI notes is you can change them over to something different. So say I don't want guitar and I wanted it to be strings. Let's go funk house. It's now, <laughs> it's now some saxophones basically, but these are audio. And if you drag them in, you'll notice they look a little different. That's kind of got the waveform there rather than these little lines. And so the difference being this hasn't loaded up an instrument because it's an audio, it's, it's a real life piece of audio. It's not a virtual instrument. It's not ones and zeros. So you can't change this as much. You can't change the instrument, but you can add audio effects on top of it. Usually a real instrument will sound better than a MIDI instrument. The MIDI instruments, because they're simulations, they're either samples or they're calculated with uh, ones and zeros, they're programmed. They usually don't sound as good as audio. That's kind of the trade-off, but you get more versatility with MIDI. You can change the notes around, for instance, whereas changing the notes around on this, it's, it's doable, but it's not as seamless as doing it with the MIDI. So these are the loops and you can search up here for anything. So you can look for a bass, you look for a bass. Uh, you've got filters up the top here. So if you want to choose an instrument, you can choose drum beats or you just click on it and click it off. Electric guitar, electric guitar, and you can choose it by genre or you can choose it by descriptors. So these just work as filters and then that's gonna find you everything that's clean, grooving and melodic. And you click the orange X to get out of that. That is the loop browser. You can open and close that with O, by the way, the letter O. And then over here, you've got your browser. So this will show you all the audio used in your project. But if you come over to all files, then if you want to find a third party library or you want to load an audio file from your documents, let's say, then you can find it and drag it in. So um, this kind of works as like a browser for all your other files. Uh, and you can open and close that with F for file. So that is the overview of the main areas. Some other basic functionality you should know is you can click and drag and that will bring up this blue selection box. And then if you want to get rid of anything, if you want to delete anything, you hit backspace or Dell. If you want to get rid of a whole track, you make sure it's selected with this gray area and you can hit backspace or Dell. 
same again, same again, and then you're back to one. You'll notice that this yellow area is on. This is called the cycle, and that's because I turned it on up here or with C, cycle C, and that just loops an area. So it's just going to play bars three to five, and then bars three to five, and it's just going to go backwards and forwards looping, basically. So that's C for cycle. Anytime you want to create a new track as well, you've got two options. You can add a new track, and this window comes up that we saw at the start cancel or you can duplicate it which will just do a complete copy of what's already there what's already selected so you go to and anytime this is selected the lighter grade that means it's the one that's selected so duplicate it and that's been duplicated um, a couple of other controls while we're looking at this window you've got mute which will completely cut off everything that's in this any regions in this track solo will only play the regions in this track if there were some record is the arming like we talked about and this orange eye is for input monitor so if you just want to hear it and play the sound so i just got this orange eye on it allows me to input monitor so it allows me to hear the input basically and the input is my midi keyboard um, if i had it turned on for all of these i'd hear all of them and you'd see that by the green lines coming on so you can see that there's audio playing on all of those so so those that's for the input monitoring to hear it and then if we were going to record all of them we'd need all of those selected and then we'd hit r on the keyboard so hopefully that makes sense and i think that's everything you need to know about the main windows for now there's a few extra controls up here but we'll go into that a bit more in other details key one to know is you've got two different uh, mouse options here so the first one is what we've already got selected and that's your default one but if you come over here you've got a second option and that's the command tool so when you hold command you get a second tool available to use so if I'm holding command and I select that now if you notice I get some scissors up when I hold command so if I wanted to say say I had a region here let's create one and I wanted to cut it in half. If I hold command and cut, that's now cut that region in half. So there's a few, well, there's quite a few different ones, but we're not going to go through all of them right now. But yeah, your main ones are going to be the pointer here and probably the scissors as your secondary tool. That's how I keep it. But yes, that's everything in the main windows. That's everything you need to navigate. So hopefully that all made sense and I'll see you on the next video.